My family and I lived in London, England from 1991 to the year 2000. I served as a rabbi of the New West End Synagogue from 1991 to 1997. And from 97 to 2000, I founded a new synagogue called Netzach Yisrael in Edgeware, part of the Seed community. In 1997, we read in the Times that then Prime Minister John Major went to a state visit to India. And on his visit, he went to the mountains of Tibet. And there he witnessed a coming of age ceremony where the fathers of the tribe lined up on one side and the 13 year old sons lined up on the other side opposite them. And in a very moving ceremony, each father walked up to his son and handed him a symbol of the tribe. And that was a Kalashnikov rifle. And of course, that was a very poignant and moving thing for then Prime Minister John Major. He saw the transference and transmission of legacy from one generation to the next. And the legacy of that tribe was self-preservation, to save yourself, to protect yourself. And therefore, it made sense that each father presented the symbol of self-preservation to his son. I also experienced such a transmission of legacy in 1999, when I traveled with my family from England, and we flew as a family from England to Memphis, Tennessee, to spend Pesach, Passover, with my in-laws. My parents surprised us and came down from Montreal to spend Passover with my in-laws as well. And this was the first time that the grandchildren had both sets of grandparents together at one Passover table, one Passover setting. It was beautiful. During the Passover Cholamoy, the intermediate days, we went to the Target store and my father said, your son's nine. It's time I gave him his present. I'm going to buy him his first baseball glove. I said, Dad, in England, we play cricket and rugby. We don't play baseball. But eventually, we'll move back to America. And I want my son to have that tradition of playing baseball as I grew up playing baseball. And Dad, how you taught me how to play baseball. So we went to the Target store. And there in the gloves and baseball aisle, we were trying on baseball gloves. I was trying on gloves. My nine-year-old was trying on gloves. Dad was trying on gloves. And then we started throwing balls to each other in the aisle. And we're trying to make sure that the ball fit the pocket. Dad said, this is it. This is the glove. I'm buying it for my grandson, and I'm paying him. I said, Dad, if it's your tradition, fantastic. I'm in. Went to the checkout counter and bought the glove. And that afternoon, we played baseball in the, my in-law's backyard. We played baseball and taught my son how to, how to catch a ball and throw the ball. And that was a transmission of legacy, of tradition. My father taught me how to play baseball. And now I was teaching my son how to play baseball. But it was a legacy from the grandfather to me and then to the grandson. And therefore, this is a passing on of tradition. That year, having both sets of grandparents there, passing on their stories and traditions of the Passover Seder, passing them on to ourselves and we passing them on to our children. And here we had an opportunity of grandparents talking and sharing tradition with their own grandchildren directly. It was a very poignant moment for me of realizing that legacy is passed from generation to generation. And that legacy is a matter of thinking about what kind of legacy do I want to give to my children? What kind of tradition do we want to give over to our children? What kind of legacy do we want to transmit to them? Is the legacy that I'm going to teach my son how to drink wine and smell the bouquet and taste the bouquet of the flavor of the wine? Is it the tradition that I want to teach him how to play chess? Is it the tradition that I want to teach him how to wash the car properly? What is the tradition, what is the legacy that I and you want to give to your children? This week, I went to a shiva. A shiva, seven-day period of mourning, where when someone loses a loved one, lo loses a parent or another loved one, they sit on low chairs for seven days in their home, and visitors come to console them. And I was there, and other people were there as well. And they asked, what happened? What happened to your mother? What happened to the... And it so happened that this person could not make it to Israel for the funeral, unfortunately, because Israel is in lockdown, and it was a very sad 
occasion for him not to have been at his own mother's funeral. He watched it on Zoom. And people asked what happened to her, what were her last days. And I listened and I saw that it was very therapeutic for the person to talk about his mother's passing and how she went on to the next world. And I said to myself, as I often do in a, at a shiva, I said, I don't want to know how the person died. I want to know how they lived. And this is the only question that I ask at a shiva. And I asked my friend, what was the legacy that your mother gave to you to give over to your children? And he said, hmm, that's a hard question. He said, my mother's legacy was openness, to be non-judgmental, to accept everyone, to love everyone for who they are, and to accept them who they are. Now, as a rabbi of the New West End Synagogue, I conducted many funerals. And once I went to a family, I asked them, what's the legacy of your mother? So this woman said, my mother's legacy was she loved to play bridge. I said, oh, I see. And your father? Another occasion? My father loved to travel. I said, that's really nice. Very, very, very good memories, I'm sure. But what's the legacy? What was the legacy that they taught you? What was the message of their life? What do they stand for that they taught you to teach your children? And this couple said to me, two different couples in London, they said to me, well, Rabbi, I really haven't thought about that. Oh, I said, okay. And I said to myself, do you want me to stand up at the funeral and give a eulogy and said, this man stood for travel. He loved traveling. He loved life. I could say that. But is that the essence of his legacy? This mother, this woman, she loved to play bridge, the camaraderie and friendship. That's beautiful. But what's the lasting, eternal legacy? What's the message of their life? And therefore, when I ask that question at a shiva, it causes people to think. And I was thinking about it. Not only do we have to ask that question when someone passes away, but we need to ask that question while we're alive and ask ourselves, what legacy am I creating? What legacy and message am I passing on to my children so that they can give that legacy to their children? The Passover Seder that year, I felt I was passing on the tradition of asking questions, of curiosity, of adventuring, of seeking questions and answers. The whole format of the Passover Seder is question and answer. And therefore, I felt that we want to enter into a dialogue with our children. I want our children to be curious, to be adventuresome, to look into life and to ask questions and to seek. That's a legacy that I want to instill in my children. And I'm working on that legacy now. I'm thinking about it as I live and as I raise my children and grandchildren. What kind of legacy am I going to leave? What kind of legacy am I creating in them to give over? What values? What do I stand for? What do I believe in? And that's something perhaps that we can ask ourselves. What legacy are you building? What legacy are you creating? What do you stand for? And what are you teaching your children? While we are here, while we're living in this fragile life during the pandemic, we must ask ourselves this question. What do I stand for? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? And what are you creating? What legacy are you creating to teach your children so they can teach their children?